In the last video, we were able to add 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 3, 3 to the 4, all the way up to 3 to the 100. But I told you that we overflow way before we get to 3 to the 100. All right, remember our registers, we are adding the result into ECX right here. And ECX is only 32 bits, and it is much too small to store a number that big, 3 to the 1 plus 3 to the 2 plus 3 to the 3 plus 3 to the 4. It, it, so it starts out okay, but then it gets really hairy very quickly. In fact, I can show you. Let me bring up the calculator here. And uh, I'm just going to start 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And yes, it grows quickly. You can see here, if you remember, these represent the first 32 bits. These represent the next 32 bits. All right. And and so the bits we want to pay attention to are these first 32, and you notice the ones are crawling their way left as I multiply by 3 every time it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually, ECX is only 32 bits big. Eventually, we will overflow. Now, in the case of the Windows calculator, it will overflow to these bits. All right, but in the case of ECX, they pretty much jump off a cliff like lemmings. Boom, they're gone. They disappear. So if that's my bank account, yeah, <laughs> I don't like overflow. But, you know, in this case, ah, uh, well, whatever. Now, at what point, how many threes is it going to take to overflow all the way out of these 32 bits? Well, I could sit here and just count them. And you probably could offline. You can watch how many times I hit three. But every time I hit three, it's getting closer and closer and closer. But as an exercise, I want the computer to tell me how many threes it takes. I don't want to have to do it. I want the computer to do it. So let me show you how to detect overflow on the CPU. Let me close this out. And if you remember when we were studying the compare and jump less than instructions, I told you about the flags register. There's 32 bits in there. I'm not going to draw all 32 bits, but hopefully you get the idea. Let me actually start over here and I'll start from the left. So there's a bit, there's a bit, and there's a bit. And do you remember the bits we studied, they're, we call them flags because they're on or off, Boolean values if you would. Do you remember what positions we studied and what they represent and that sort of thing? If you don't, go back to the videos where I talk about compare and jump less than. But, but just as a review, we talked about the sign flag and the zero flag. The zero, the zero flag is located at bit 6 and the sign flag is located at bit 7. So let's just number these 0, 1, 2, Three, four, five. That's a five. Six, seven, and then eight, nine, ten. So, so on and so forth. So, the zero flag is bit six. Zero flag, and the sign flag is bit seven. So, the sign flag will be a one if it's negative. Zero if it's zero or positive. The zero flag will be one if the result is zero. Otherwise, it will be. Zero indicating non-zero. Wow, that's hard to think about. Okay, let's learn about one more bit. I'm going to keep numbering here to 9, 10, and 11. This bit is known as the overflow bit. All right, and it is turned to 1 if the last operation that just executed caused an overflow. Okay, well, which operations are going to possibly could cause an overflow? Well, we have the multiply. That could certainly overflow. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That grows extremely fast. But then ECX is taking on values much faster than that because we keep adding those values in here. So this add ECX could also cause an overflow as well. Well, there's a way we can detect, read the state of, the, of this bit and act upon it. And that is with another conditional branching statement. The first conditional branching statement I taught you was jump less than, but now let's learn a, another one. It's called jump overflow. And it's as simple as J-O for jump overflow. So let me, I'm going to do somewhat of a contrived example, but I want to know how many threes does it take before I overflow? And do I overflow here or do I overflow here? Alright, so let's actually do this. I'm going to say multiply EBX, jump overflow to multiply caused an overflow. All right, now I need to define this label. I'll define it right here. And in a previous video, I believe I introduced no op, which means do nothing, no operation, just waste away a cycle of uh, CPU. And the reason why I do this, high-level compilers like C++, 
.NET, C Sharp with the jitter, those compilers also generate no ops. For the very same reason I'm generating a no op, it's for me to, to have a place to put a breakpoint so that I can stop the program and investigate what's going on. So we know if the multiply up here causes an overflow, we will jump on overflow down and we will stop. I'll be able to put a breakpoint on my no op. Well, let's do the same thing with addition. Jump overflow, addition caused an overflow and control shift w select the word control c go down here paste it make it a label and no op as well okay so now we're checking well the multiply could overflow the add could overflow we'll figure out which one overflows first and then we can see hey how many threes did it take to overflow so let me uh, f11 start the debugger up control alt d i'm going to take this off our screen for now f11 F11, and then let's look for our no ops. Here's our no ops, and this one is the multiply. This one is the add. Remember, I did them in in multiply, multiply, add, add. So I kept the respective order there. So let me put a breakpoint on both of these. Pop, pop, and you can see here, jump overflow to this instruction right here, this address. Well, where is this address? That one's right here. Okay, this is the addition one, and then this one is for the multiplication. The 3, 5 here, you can see the 3, 5 as well. All right, we're up here. I'm going to hit F5 and let it run until it jumps on overflow for one of these. So F5, okay, here we go. Now, what number did it overflow at? What count are we on? Here's my assembly. You remember we increment this counter every time, keeping track of uh, which 3 we're on, which power we're on. So the counter, I can investigate here, and the counter is residing at this memory address. So let me copy that. There's no copy option. I'll just control C it. And debug, Windows, give me a view in the memory. I'll pin this for now. Put that right there. Hit enter. And it looks like we overflowed at 1.4. And remember, this is a hexadecimal number, so this is 116 plus 4, which makes... T we overflowed when the... Uh, basically, we got to iteration 20 here. All right, and we can actually prove that. Let's bring up the Windows calculator here. I'm going to say 3. There's 1, 3. 2, 3. Actually, let's do this zero base like the computer did. So, 0... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Look, we're about to overflow. Twenty. Boom. We're up here. Okay, one zero. You remember, this is E D X. Okay, the upper thirty-two bits. This is E A X down here. So we overflowed out of E A X into E D X in the overflow bit caught that. Let's actually investigate EDX. If we look at EDX, if I can get these windows nice and aligned, the EDX uh, it should be a 2. So there you go, 2 right there. Okay, anyway, that's kind of cool. We were able to discover that. So it looks like we detected the overflow at that last power of 3. Let's just detect, uh, just for kicks and giggles, Shift F5 Let's get rid of this multiply uh, overflow, and I'll get rid of this one down here. Let's just investigate the addition. You know, when are we going to? When will the addition overflow? Well, I'm going to guess it's on the uh, 20th one as well, because once I throw that big number into that uh, accumulation, then we'll overflow. But let's do it. F11, Control Alt D, F11, and go find my no op. Put a breakpoint here. F5. Okay, it looks like we. Jumped on overflow. Let's find the memory address where our counter is stored. Right here. Put it right there. Enter. And sure enough, it's 16 plus 4 makes 20 again. So there you go. Now, I've kind of neglected to point out the overflow bit. I said, do you remember? Let me bring this diagram back up. The overflow bit is bit 11. Let me highlight our bytes again. So here is one. Actually, let's do nibbles. So there's one nibble. There is another nibble, and there is another nibble. Okay, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the uppermost bit in that second nibble, 0, 1, 2, that second zero base nibble will be set to a 1 on overflow. Let's just see if we can witness that happening. I'm going to 
go to our assembly program here. I think we're done with all this. Let's keep the return though because I don't want it to run off into Neverland. Uh, I, I just want to show you that the overflow bit uh, gets turned on and we can conditionally jump on it. Let me move into EAX. I want to let's set every single bit in EAX. Let's turn them all on. Let's fill that up as fat as we can. So FF, 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 FF. That's a hex number. Control U. Uh, let's turn on all those bits. Okay. I have to also prefix with zero or else the tokenizer will, the assembler will hiccup on it. And I, I, I don't think it's case sensitive. Let me just try. Control Shift B. Yeah. As, the assembly is not case sensitive though. I'm just used to always writing it in lowercase. So move into EAX, that big value. And so let's do something to cause overflow. I want to multiply it by two. So let me uh, move into EBX, the value two, because I cannot do a multiply two. I have to give it a register value. So that will multiply EBX or two, the value inside of EBX, against EAX, and that will definitely cause overflow. So let me F11 on that. Control Alt D, F11. F11, notice EAX, we've pumped it full as big as it can get. We're preparing to hit it with a two, a multiply. And here's our multiply. Pay attention right here to this nibble right there because whatever the bit values are going to be, I expect this uppermost bit to be turned on. So it will at least be an eight, maybe higher, depending on what these bits do here. So F11, it's an A. All right, which means one, zero, one, zero, or a 10. So eight plus two is 10. So yes, we had overflow, right? That was too big. And, and look at EAX. It's, it's when we multiply by two, that's the same as shifting left by two. I haven't shown you what a shift is. We'll get into shifting later. But essentially that one little bit got pushed off the end. And oh, that was so mean. That was so rude.